Hi designers, welcome to SolidWorks Central. In this tutorial, we'll model exercise nine step-by-step -step using key features like extruded boss base, revolved boss base, revolved cut, plane, extruded cut, fillet, chamfer, and the cosmetic thread feature. You can find the technical drawing link below, but try modeling it yourself first. That's the best way to improve and truly learn. Finally, we'll add realistic appearances and set up a studio scene for a professional final look. So, let's get started and begin modeling. First, open a sketch on the top plane. Next, select the Polygon tool from the Sketch tab. Set the number of sides to four. Make sure Inscribed Circle is selected. Draw the polygon centered at the origin. Select the Smart Dimension tool Set the diameter of the inscribed circle to 70 millimeters. Select the top vertex and the origin, then apply a vertical relation to fully define the polygon. Select the circle tool, draw a circle on the top side of the inscribed circle. Select smart dimension and set its diameter to 10 millimeters. Click the arrow next to Linear Sketch Pattern and select Circular Sketch Pattern. For the center of rotation, select the origin. For entities to pattern, select the circle we just drew. Right-click to confirm the pattern. As you can see, the patterned circles are still blue. They're underdefined. We'll now make them fully defined. Let's look at three quick ways to fix this. Method 1. Grab the center of any undefined circle, move it slightly, and then snap it back into place. Press Ctrl plus Z to undo the move. Method two, grab the center of an undefined circle and drop it anywhere. You'll notice the rotation center has shifted. Select the rotation center and snap it back to the origin. Press Ctrl plus Z twice to return to the original position. Method three, quick way. Touch the rotation center at the origin and slightly drag it as if moving. It will automatically snap back to the origin. Now, the entire sketch is fully defined, all black. Select the Sketch Fillet tool. Set the fillet radius to 10 millimeters. Apply the fillet to all corners by selecting the entire sketch. Right-click to confirm the operation. Now, go to the Features tab and select the Extruded Boss Base command. The end condition will remain as blind. Set the depth value to 10 millimeters. Click OK. We've completed the base part of our model. Now, open a new sketch on the front plane. Select the line tool. Start drawing from the bottom center of the part. Now, select the Smart Dimension tool. Set the first radius to 15 millimeters. The next radius will be 20 millimeters. This line has a length of 25 millimeters. And the total height is 115 millimeters. Use Zoom to fit or press the F key to fit the sketch to the screen. From the Features tab, select the Revolved Boss Base command. For the axis of revolution, select the vertical line we drew earlier. Right-click to confirm the command. Now, let's create the hollow section of our part using a revolved cut. To see it more clearly, switch to Section View. Then, open a new sketch on the front plane. Select the Line tool. Start drawing again from the bottom center of the part. Draw this part with a slight angle. Now, select the Smart Dimension tool. This radius is 8 millimeters. 
the length of this line is 30 millimeters. This radius is 12.5 millimeters. And this radius is 15 millimeters. Finally, the vertical length of the angled line is 35 millimeters. We've completed our sketch and it's now fully defined. From the Features tab, select the Revolved Cut command. For the axis of revolution, select the vertical line we drew earlier. Keep the Revolve type as blind and the angle at 360 degrees. Click OK and we've completed the Revolve Cut. You can turn off the section view Now, go to Reference Geometry and select the Plane command. For the first reference, choose the front plane from the Feature tree. We want to offset the front plane by a certain distance. Set the offset distance value to 55mm. Then click OK to confirm. Now, select the newly created plane and open a sketch on it. Click on the plane from the Feature tree and hide it. Now, select the Circle tool, draw three circles. Next, select the Smart Dimension tool. Set the diameter of the largest circle to 30 millimeters. The middle circle will be 27 millimeters and the smallest circle will be 25 millimeters. Set the distance between the center of the circles and the bottom of the part to 50 millimeters. Finally, the circles don't have any horizontal relation, so they can still move freely. Add a vertical relation between the center of the circles and the origin. Now our sketch is fully defined. Next, we'll give each circle a different depth. Select the Extruded Boss Base command. In the Selected Contours box, choose which sketch area to apply the feature to. It lets you pick specific closed regions instead of using the entire sketch. First, select the circle with a diameter of 27 millimeters. Keep the end condition as blind. Reverse the direction. Set the depth value to 24 millimeters. Click OK. Now, in the feature tree, click the sketch used by the last extruded boss base, the sketch where we drew the circles. Then open the extruded boss base command again. In the selected contours box, Select the 25mm circle. Reverse the direction. Set the depth value to 3mm. We want this depth to start from a specific surface. For this, in the Start Condition section, select Surface, Face or Plane. This option lets you start the extrusion from any existing face or reference plane instead of the sketch plane. Click OK to confirm. Once again, select the sketch and open the extruded boss base command. This time, select the circle with a diameter of 30 millimeters. Reverse the direction. Set the starting surface for the extrusion. For the end condition, choose up to next. Click OK. We've completed this section as well. Now, let's add a hole on the side cylindrical boss. Click the end face and open a sketch. Select the circle tool. Draw a circle at the exact center of the face. Select the smart dimension tool. Set the circle diameter to 15 millimeters. From the features tab, open the extruded cut command. Set the end condition to up to next. Click OK. Switch to section view to check the result. 
Use the right plane as the section plane and confirm. Great, we're progressing step by step. Exit section view. Now, select the plane command again. We'll offset the front plane once more. Keep the offset distance value at 55 millimeters. Check flip offset to reverse the direction. Click OK. Open a sketch on the new plane. Use normal to to look perpendicular to the plane. Click once more to view it from the opposite side. From the feature tree, click the new plane and hide it to clean up the view. Select the circle tool. Draw a large circle, then draw another circle for reference and activate for construction in the options to make it a construction circle. Finally, draw a smaller circle. Now, select the smart dimension tool. Set the large circle's diameter to 80 millimeters. Set the construction circle's diameter to 60 millimeters and set the small circle's diameter to 30 millimeters. Set the distance between the center of the circles and the base to 70 millimeters. Align the circle centers vertically with the origin using a vertical relation. Select the circle tool again Then use Smart Dimension and set the diameter to 10 millimeters. Use Circular Sketch Pattern to pattern the small circle around the center. Open the Extruded Boss Base command. Change the end condition to blind. Set the depth value to 10 millimeters. Make sure merge result is checked for all solid features. Click OK to confirm. From the feature tree, go back to the sketch. Open the extruded boss base command again. In the selected contours box, this time select the small circle. Change the end condition to up to next. Click OK to confirm. Now, let's create a hole on this side cylindrical feature. Open a sketch on this face. Select the circle tool and draw two circles at the center. Select the smart dimension tool. This circle's diameter is 40 millimeters and this small circle's diameter is 15 millimeters. Open the extruded cut command. In the selected contours box, first select the small circle. Set the end condition to up to next. Click OK to confirm. From the feature tree, select the sketch under the extruded cut feature and open the extruded cut command again. This time, set the end condition to blind. Enter the depth value as two millimeters and click OK to confirm. Switch to section view and check the result. Most of the model is now complete. Only a few details remain. Exit section view. Select the fillet command. Set the radius value to 4 mm. Apply it to the edges shown in the technical drawing. Click OK to confirm. Now open the chamfer command. Make sure the chamfer type is set to angle distance. Set the distance value to 1 mm and apply it to the edges indicated in the drawing. Click OK to confirm. 
Now we'll use the cosmetic thread feature. To access it, go to the insert menu. Open the annotations tab and from there select the cosmetic thread option. Alternatively, you can quickly find it using the search commands box. Open the cosmetic thread feature. In the circular edges box, select the circular edge of the cylindrical feature where the thread will start. Select this circular edge. For the standard, make sure ANSI metric is selected. For the type, choose machine threads. Set the size to M27 by 3.0. Finally, set the end condition to up to next. This means the cosmetic thread will be applied from the selected edge up to the next edge. Click OK to confirm. To make the threads visible, go to Options. Under the Document Properties tab, open the Detailing section. Enable Shaded Cosmetic Threads and click OK. And now our model is complete. Let's quickly assign a material and set up the scene. I'll apply a steel appearance, but you can experiment with any appearance you like. Let's change our scene from the Scenes section. I want to use a scene from Basic Scenes. Activate our Render Tools tab. Let's open the Edit Scene tool. Click Rebuild and SolidWorks will regenerate the scene's lighting and shadow data to ensure it looks correct with the current model and environment settings. And that's how we've completed Exercise 9 in SolidWorks. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to SolidWorks Central for more step-by-step -step tutorials every week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.